Stitches show. Today we're going to show you how to make a sun hat completely customized to your own tastes. I recommend using cotton for this project because it's cool and it breathes in the hot weather and I just used whatever I had in my stash. This pattern favors tight tension. So if you find that your stitches are a little on the loose side, like you can see spaces opening up between the stitches, then you might want to size down your hook. So pick up a hook that's a size down from the one I recommend in this video. You are going to need your measurements or the measurements of the head you're making this hat for. And if you don't have those handy, we do have a head sizing chart on the tools page of our website. And you'll find a link to that in the description box down below. And just a quick reminder, you can follow us, share pictures, and get news and updates on the show here on YouTube, Google+, Instagram, Etsy, Pinterest, and now Twitter too. And for those of you who aren't so social media minded, you can always head over to our website on the homepage, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see our Twitter feed there for news and updates. Now on to the hat. The best part about making this hat is that you can decorate it however you want. I went with some vintage antique lace trim because it's another good way to use up what you might have in your craft stash. <laughs> so let's grab our hooks, grab our cotton yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a custom sun hat together. For our sun hats, we're going to use about 150 grams of cotton size 4 medium weight yarn. So about 150 grams for an adult, a little bit less for a child. Cotton is nice and breezy and cool for the summer. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, you might need a safety pin or a stitch marker. You're going to want a measuring tape and possibly a calculator if your math skills aren't super duper. <laughs> And today's hook is a size 4 millimeter or 4.5 millimeter or a G. That's also a size 8 in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. First thing we're going to do is measure the circumference of our head. So that means you wrap the measuring tape around your head, forehead, through to the back, over your ears, and that gives you the circumference or the full measurement of the circumference of your head. For me, that winds up being 22. Once you have that number, you want to find the diameter of the circle that we're going to build to start with. So you take the full measurement of the circumference of your head and divide it by pi, which is 3.14. That's the short form of pi. And that gives you the diameter of the circle, which is the circumference of your head. So you want the closest whole number. For me, that's, that's obviously seven inches. Write it down if your memory isn't as sharp as it used to be. And that's the number we're going to aim for as we work on our base circles to start our hats. We're going to be building an ever-increasing circle to start. If you need a little extra help with that, we did a tutorial a while back in which we made a beret, and that will give you an idea of what an ever-increasing circle is if you need some extra help. We're going to start with a cinch circle. And once you have your cinch circle built, you're going to work eight single crochet into that circle Remember to work over top of that little short tail so you can cinch up your circle when you're done. Once you have eight single crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab that little short tail, cinch your circle shut nice and tight, and we are working in the round, which means we are not joining our rows with a slip stitch. We're just going to work directly into the first stitch of row one to begin row two. Row one has eight single crochet in it. Because we're working an ever increasing circle, we are going to double up our stitch count now by working two single crochet into every stitch all the way around. That first stitch can always be a little bit tight. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna work over my little short tail and we're gonna work two single crochet into every single stitch all the way around. By the end of row two, you will have 16 single crochet. At the end of row two, you should have 16 single crochet. We are expanding, so we are now going to work the pattern of two single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the stitch after that, and then repeat two, one, 
two, one, all the way around. This is where you may want to use your stitch marker or your safety pin to help keep track of your row. You can always move your stitch marker and safety pin at the end of every single row. I like to mark the last stitch of the last row I worked so that when I get all the way around I know that I've completed one row. So if you have trouble kind of seeing where you're at or if you're counting is a bit off or you have to put it down and pick it back up again, you might want to use the stitch marker method. So like I said, row three, we are moving from 16 single crochet up to 24. We're going to do that by working two single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch, and then repeating that little pattern of two one, two one, all the way around. At the end of row three, I'm up to 24 stitches. There's my stitch marker marking the last stitch of my previous row. My next last stitch ends literally in top on the top of it, so there's a little bit right on top of it. And if you want to keep using your stitch marker, you just unhook it from the last stitch and then hook it back into the last stitch of your current row. And if you have to get your hook out of the way, <laughs> you can do that too. There we go. Row four, we are still expanding. We are now going to work the pattern of two stitches into the next stitch. So two single crochet into the next stitch, that one right there. Single crochet into each of the next two, and then repeat two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. We'll be going from a total of 24 stitches in row three up to 30 stitches, 32 stitches I should say, <laughs> in row four. At the end of row four, you should have 32 stitches. I am not going to be using my stitch marker from here on out because I find it looks a little easier for me to follow, but I should hope you understand how to move your stitch marker now. You would put it on the last stitch of the last row you just did to keep track of where you're at. Row five, we're gonna move from 32 stitches to 40. So the new pattern is two single crochet into the first stitch of the set and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So two, one, 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 two, one, 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 all the way around, and at the end of row five, you'll have 40 stitches. At the end of row five, you should have 40 stitches, and if you're starting to notice that your circle is sort of bending and twisting a little bit, don't worry about it. That is perfectly normal, and it will disappear once our hat is finished. Row six, ever increasing, we are now going to work the pattern of two single crochet into the first stitch single crochet into each of the next four stitches and repeat all the way around. So two, one, 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 two, one, 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 one. And at the end of row six, you'll have 48 stitches. At the end of row six, you should have 48 stitches and we're just going to do a little circumference check. So remember that number from before, you got the circumference of your head, you took that number, divided it by pi, and that gave you the diameter of your circle. So if you lay your circle down flat, like I did here, but I'm gonna hold it up so you can see what I'm doing. And you take your measuring tape, and you run it right across the very center of your circle. That is the diameter of your circle. So I've almost reached four inches here. You want to keep an eye on the diameter of your circle as you increase because you want it to be just under the measurement. So for example, I need seven inches. I want to keep measuring this until it's just under the measurement of seven inches all the way across because adding that next row of non-increase will still give it just a little bit more increase and you want your sun hat to kind of fit snugly around your head. Not too tight, but not too loose that your head's sort of swimming around <laughs> inside your hat. So from here on out, depending on how big your hat is, so if you're making it for a little person, you might want to start keeping a close eye on your diameter. Um, from here on out, you can measure at the end of every row, and you want to aim for a measurement that's just underneath your needed diameter. So for me, it's seven inches. I want a measurement that's just shy of that. So we're into row seven now. We want to work two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then single crochet into each of the next five, and repeat that all the way around. So two, one, 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 one. Two, one, 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 one. So two and then five singles all the way around. And at the end of row seven, 
we'll have, what are we up to, 56 stitches. At the end of row 7, you should have 56 stitches. We're on to row 8. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch, and then single crochet into each of the next six stitches, and repeat that all the way around. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then single crochet into each of the next six. Repeat that all the way around, and at the end of row eight, we'll be up to 64 stitches. At the end of row 8, you should have 64 stitches, and make sure you're checking your circumference as, or I should say the diameter of the circumference of your circle as you go. This should be roughly 5 inches for you, and if you're at the 5 inch mark, and you're making this for, oh, I don't know, a toddler, someone who's between 2 and 5 years of age, then that might be where you want to stop forming the ever-increasing circle so that you can start to create the rest of the hat, and that is just straight single crochet all the way around. So keep checking your diameter as we go. For the rest of us, still expanding, we are into row 9. We want to move from 64 stitches in row 8 to 72 stitches in row 9. We're going to do that by working two single crochet into the first stitch, and then a single crochet into each of the next seven, and repeat that all the way around, and we'll be up to 72 stitches at the end of row 9. At the end of row 9, you should have 72 stitches. Check the diameter of your circle. Make sure it's still just under the required diameter length or measurement. And if you're still moving on, we're on to row 10. We're going to move from 72 stitches to 80. And we're going to do that by working two single crochet into the first stitch. And then single crochet into each of the next eight. So two, and then one into the next eight, two, one into the next eight, and so on all the way around. At the end of row 10, you should have 80 stitches all the way around, and it's a good time to measure the diameter of your circle. I'm at 6 inches, or just under that, which tells me that I will probably only get halfway around with another bit of increasing before my entire circle is just under the 7 inch mark. So when you're getting close to the target measurement, you want to start, as you work the last sort of row of increasing, increase for oh, one, two, three, four sets, and then remeasure. Maybe do another set or another couple sets and remeasure. It doesn't have to be a perfect increase all the way around. Because we're working this hat in the round, the circle will just naturally start. So you really want to aim for a measurement um, less than, say, a perfect number of stitches. So don't worry so much about a perfect stitch count. As you can probably see, there's sort of a neat little octagon shape forming here. You can see some definite sides, and that's because of the way we've increased. So this is a, nice, a neat way to sort of just measure, work a few more increases, measure again, work a few more increases, measure again, just so you're close to your target number. So for row 11, we are going to continue with the increasing. That means that we work two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then single crochet into each of the next nine stitches, and then repeat. Remember to pause after oh, three or four sets of these little increases and measure your diameter once again, because you want to make sure that you don't over or go over that target measurement. All right, I have worked that little increase three quarters of the way around. So I've got two sets that I did not increase on. So instead of finishing completely row 11, in which case I would have had 88 stitches, I've only increased six times out of a possible eight. Because when I measure across the widest parts now of this circle, I am about six and a half inches, so I work out to about six and a half inches all the way across, and I'll bring that up so you can see it. There's a six and a half inch mark right there. And I want to stop there, because my target measurement is seven inches all the way across, but this final row, so when I do one more row, or start just single crocheting all the way around without any increases, it's still going to spread out a little bit. And Cotton stretches just a tiny bit while you're wearing it. Hats tend to stretch out a bit, so you want to just err on the side of it being a little snug. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to stop a half inch away from my target mark, and now I'm just going to start to form the rest of the top of the hat. So from this point onward, I'm just going to single crochet 
into every single stitch all the way around. I'm not going to worry about the stitch count. I want to make sure that it's even. So if you, you may notice that your stitching starts to loosen up now and that will also kind of give you a little more spread through your hat. So if you don't see it starting to turn into a bowl right away, don't panic, it will. Uh, but it's going to it's going to take a couple rows before it starts to curl. That's especially if you have a bit of a loose uh, stitch tension. But from here on out, you just want to work a single crochet all the way around until we've made our hats as deep as we need them to be. And I'll get to that in a second. I've been crocheting around and around now for quite a while, and it's time to check the depth of our hat. For a child, you want the depth uh, to be between, oh, I don't know, four, five and six inches. For an adult female, maybe between six and a half to eight inches, and for a male, seven to nine inches. And we're going to measure from the very first row we made. So find the center, and just sort of take your measuring tape, and then lean it all the way down to the bottom edge. And I'm at the seven inch mark. The other way of figuring out if this fits is to try it on and this row should sit just a bit above your eyebrow because now we want to build the brim. When the hat is as deep as you like, you want to stop single crocheting in a straight-ish line from that little bump. So I sometimes tell people to mark that with a stitch marker if it's difficult to see, but you can see where my first row turned into my second row. That's the mark I use and I just sort of sort of scoop my way up and I try to stop single crocheting somewhere around that line. When you're working on a hat like this, it's not that obvious. So somewhere around there is good. And now we want to start building on the brim. So in order to create the brim, we wanted to start to sort of spread out. So it doesn't matter what your stitch count is, and if you're comfortable uh, just counting, you can do that. But I highly recommend that you mark your last stitch with a stitch marker or a safety pin like I'm doing here. And this way you only have to worry about the repeating pattern. So I've marked my last stitch, and now we're going to do a row of increasing. Doesn't matter what your stitch count is, and this probably won't work out perfectly, and that's just fine. We're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next three stitches, and then repeat all over again. So two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next three stitches, repeat that all the way around, and once you get back to your stitch marker, pause and we'll continue from there. After you've repeated that little increasing set thing and you're back round to what's close to the beginning, like I said, it's probably not going to work out so long as your last stitch of your little increase set is somewhere within five stitches of your marked stitch, you're fine. Stitch count does not matter. This is a perfect imperfect hat. <laughs> Next row, we're just going to work a single crochet into every single stitch all the way around. Once you're back round to the beginning and there's your stitch marker, you can leave your stitch marker in place or you can move it up to mark your last stitch, whatever works best for you. I can tell that that's more or less where I start and finish from here on out. And like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to work another row of increasing now. So we're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch or the first stitch of the increase set and then a single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Repeat that all the way around, doesn't have to work out perfectly, and I'll catch back up with you at the beginning. Now that you've worked another row of repeating increases, and you're close enough to where you started, so there's my little marker, I'm actually going to move it up just so I can keep track of where I'm at. We're going to work two rows now of just straight old single crochet, no increasing, no decreasing. Just single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for two rows. Depending on the size of the head, so if you're making this for a little person, you might want to stop with that much brim, but it's always good to try it on because everybody's heads are a little different. After you've finished those two rows of just straight single crochet, we're going to work another row of increase now, and we're going to continue with that little pattern we started with the last two increase rows. So we're going to start with two single crochet into the first stitch, 
and then we're going to single crochet into each of the next five. So two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next five, repeat that all the way around. It's not going to match up perfectly and that's okay. And I'll catch back up with you at the beginning. All right, and that ends the last row of increasing on this hat. I've already moved my pin so that I'm marking the last row of my last, or the last stitch of my last row. And from here on out, it's kind of up to you how wide you want to make your brim. I would recommend between one and three more rows of just straight single crochet. That'll give you a little more width. But remember, the more you add to your brim, the more floppy and sort of like ripply it's going to become, which is fine. It depends on the look you're going for, uh, but you want to keep Keep that in mind going forward. Also, like I said before, tight stitch tension is great for this hat because it kind of helps keep it in shape. If you feel that you're getting a little too much um, rippling or that you maybe your stitch tension isn't tight enough, your stitches are kind of loose, you can move to a slightly smaller hook. So you can move sort of one size down and that'll help tighten up your stitches a little bit. But I would recommend from here on out just trying it on after every row to see how wide you want your brim to be. And uh, I'll see you near the end. I worked three rows of single crochet after my last increase row. So three rows is enough for me. That gives me a brim that's approximately it's just under three inches wide and it sits flat when I'm sitting it on my workspace and when I put it on it's not too ripply or floppy. I like it. So once you've worked as many increase or I should say as many single rows of single crochet as you like to finish off your brim, you're just going to slip stitch into the very next stitch, snip your yarn, and fasten off. You want to grab your yarn needle and weave your tail in back and forth underneath the last row of your hat. And now you're free to decorate it if you want. You can leave it nice and plain like this or you can add a sash or a ribbon around the side, maybe put a big flower on it. It's entirely up to you. And now it's time to decorate. You can decorate it however you like, but I do recommend that you tack your ribbon or sashes and whatnot into place using a needle and thread or a little fabric glue because you don't want anything flying off your hat the next time you're visiting the beach or the market. <laughs> you can also add a little stiffness to the brim with some spray starch if you're so inclined. You can pick up a written copy of this pattern in our Etsy shop and it will include detailed directions on custom fit and head sizing. We hope you had fun making this sun hat along with us today, and we will see you soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. Bye!